Currently, it is Friday, September 9th, 2022 at the Anaheim Convention Center. And these folks here are officially getting line for D23 Expo, which, you know, I've been talking about it for a while. And this is the unofficial line, you guys. The line's supposed to open prior to 4.30 a.m., but it's currently around 4.10 or 4.11. I don't know. I haven't checked exactly, but it's definitely around that, that time right now. This is crazy, you guys. Most of these people are here for the merch, and some are here for the, you know what, the, the Disney Legends I've been wanting to, to check out. Because I actually quite enjoy Disney Legends from the previous year. This year is going to be something special, in my opinion. So yeah, welcome to D23 Expo 2022. It is Ashley, Ahsoka Tano herself. Ooh. Oh, that's right, that's the voice, right? Yeah, the, the animated uh, Ahsoka Tano. She looks better in person, I'm surprised. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. The 23 Expo 2002. Two. It's a two in a circle, and then you get another twos. The oh my god, the Mickey Mouse 100th anniversary look statue. This is where they do Victon, by the way. I'm looking at it out of reverse. This is the reverse side of it. I'm just hurrying up and getting to Disney Legends, you know. I'll just go straight, you know. There's the woman of my dreams. Here she is. Mei Ling Lee. Here she is. This is the line for the standby for um, for Disney Legends, so I think we have a better chance to go to Disney Legends though. This is the, the front of the line for standby, so there's a good chance I'm gonna get in. No matter what. People are just People we just worry, like saying, "Oh, you're not gonna get in. It's not gonna be that much. It's gonna be a lot of people. They're gonna not gonna fit in." No, they have room for for people like us, like the earliest people, to be to be in the standby. So, I think we'll. I think I'll be fine though. And since it's the only um, panel I can record, so that'll be great to to do some content out of it. Oh my God! It's the May um, cardboard a bread panda from early in the movie. And look, my cat. Is it? Yeah. Incredibly talented artist. So I'm excited to announce that starting in January, all D23 Gold members who join or renew in 23 will receive an exclusive replica of the Mickey statue as part of the Gold But knowing this crowd, I don't really think you want to wait until 2023. So as a special treat, each of you today in the audience will receive this exclusive commemorative tag. that depicts this amazing statue. And of note, these will not be available anywhere else and we've only produced enough for people in this room. acclaimed author and she's a beloved member of the Disney family. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the host of the Tamron Hall Show, Tamron Hall. This is surreal. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. I, I have to point out Disney is in my heart, Bob, but it's also on my sleeve. Mickey, can you spot the Mickey? <laughs> the Disney Legend Award is bestowed.
honor to an individual for making a significant impact on the Disney legacy. The award itself symbolizes their inspiring contributions and talents. The spiral stands for imagination, the power of an idea. The hand holds the gift of skill, discipline, and craftsmanship. The wand and the star represent magic, the spark that is ignited when imagination and skill combine to create a dream. And now, our first honoree.
me that you all came here tonight to cheer me on. Priscilla. Yes. 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 Flash. You can't control the things that happen to you, but you can control the way you react to them. It's like wrote these empty halls. Why have a ballroom with no balls? It's about finding inner strength. Because the only thing you can do is one step at a time. intimidatingly talented and just like a 10 out of 10 to spend time with. So um, Disney taught me to dream big and uh, follow your heart and also that it is totally appropriate to burst out into song at any given moment. Which I really appreciate. Um, playing Princess Anna has been the highlight of my life, I think. I mean, other than my kids and stuff, but... Um, <laughs> I'm so happy to be a part of the Disney family, and um, this year I'll probably uh, dress up as you, Bob, JP, <laughs> for either Halloween or my birthday, I haven't decided yet. Um, thank you so much for this Disney Legends Award. Um, I, it seems heavy, but I know that it will be the one thing I don't have to purchase for my kids at the theme park today, so thank you. <laughs> I love you. 
you Disney fans. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, it's such a gift. Yes! Video for it. Yeah! It's a song that everyone's singing. We just can't let it go. The highest grossing animated movie of all time. Our music is truly the universal language for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Award winning <laughs> actors and cameras. my voice and when I sing, I find my power and my identity. It's a constant reminder of how important it is for all of us to remember that we have this incredible power and we can do great things. To know that I'm part of this family and this history. It's an all-time high for me. Cold will never bother me anyway. that um, like Patrick Dempsey said, um, when I was a little girl, wait, I'm leaning over and I don't want Elsa to have big boobs. No. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. <laughs> it's hard being a 12 year old uh, blonde animated character and a 51 year old sexy goddess in real life. <laughs> double features um, out in Jersey and um, we saw everything we saw Fantasia we saw the yes. OG Cinderella and Snow White we saw Lady and the Tramp my favorite movie we saw Pinocchio um, and we would leave there and we were mesmerized we were invigorated I would run home singing and acting out all the scenes with him and I'd get behind I'd hide behind the sofa and he'd say ladies and germs Introducing the one and only Miss Adina Kim and Zell, and I'd pop up with my little hairbrush microphone and I'd sing When You Wish Upon a Star. And it was Disney and Grandpa Nat who really sparked my love for music and storytelling and my dream of performing and being on the stage and screen. So to be here in front of all of you um, as a Disney princess turned queen. Uh, I, um, I can't believe it. I mean, Elsa is the embodiment of, of empowerment and, and, and the, this young woman who gives us for her permission to embrace everything that makes us extraordinary in the world and our uniqueness and we should share it and we should not rise above our fear and we should never conceal ourselves. Um, we should always share our talents with the world. So, um, I just want to say though that that this is a dream come true for me, but dreams don't happen in isolation. And they happen with incredible minds and talent like Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck and Peter Del Vecchio and Chris Montan and Tom McDougall and all of my frozen friends who are backstage now. <laughs> um, Chris and Jonathan and Josh, who I love so much. 
and um, my husband who's here, Aaron, and my sister who's here, Kara, and my little boy Walker is in middle school, seventh grade for the first time, figuring out how to do a combination lock <laughs> um, and how to check email for the first time. And, um, and lastly, all of you fans, I mean, we may be Disney legends, but you Let It Go fans are truly legendary. We love you, Dina! Enchanted family who are doubly here with this weekend. Um, and so last but not least, in the words of Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> when you wish upon a star makes no difference. Who you are, everything your heart desires will come to to see a technique that we say and I want to just be taken to another world and that's what movies do whether they're animated or live action you start with ideas funny ideas interesting ideas emotional ideas that journey of an idea to something that happens out on screens everywhere around the world is truly extraordinary ah the simple pleasures of a delicious corn dog Beauty and the Beast got six nominations, including Best Picture. I think Beauty and the Beast probably cemented Disney as a force in animation again. It said, we want to see more from you guys. We think you're filmmakers. I've been able to work with really, really great people who take words and paint and pixels, and they spin them into these stories that give real meaning to our lives. That's what Walt Disney did, and that's what I want to do too. winning Disney storyteller extraordinaire, the one and only Disney legend, Don Hahn. <laughs> Don regrets that he is unable to join us today, Aww. but he sends his full-hearted gratitude for this recognition, and we are proud to accept this honor on his behalf. He still is one of my favorite producers. Tell me a story. Which one? The story of home. Vengeance has consumed you. Don't let it consume me. Kids who see him in that Black Panther role, 
they get to dream about and wish about and make wishes on that shooting star. I don't know what your future is, but if you're willing to take the heart away, the one that has ultimately proven to have more meaning, more victory, more glory, then you will not regret it. Why? Disney legend, Chadwick Boseman, his brother, Derek Boseman. Oh my God. I don't know if Josh is still here or not. Thank you for shouting out Chad and I know that he loved you. Um, on behalf of my parents who are here, uh, my wife is here, one of my sons is here, two of my cousins who are like sisters are here, Chad's widow Simone is here. When I heard that Disney wanted to honor Chad, the first word that came to mind for me was the word honor. And so I looked it up and the dictionary simply said, well, one of the dictionaries said that honor is a good name. And since I'm a preacher, I went to the scripture where it says that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. As I think about my, my brother and this, this honor that's being bestowed upon him, first of all, I wish that he was here to receive it. Him not being here has been a point of of immense pain for my whole family. But as I think about him, I think about how he, how he honored our parents, how he honored his family, how he honored even his, his friends, and he made sure that his friends also had good careers how he honored all the contracts that he signed, except for the last one. But he honored them with his blood, his sweat, his tears, as he played these roles and was taking chemo at the same time. Some of these roles that had him doing things that were physical. Chad was an amazing person. And him being honored. <laughs> him being honored today is no surprise to me because he, he spent his life from childhood until today always being recognized and receiving honors. He also honored his widow. He was so strong that even in his last days, six days before he died, he, he honored the promise that he made to her and he married her. I close with this. Plato is credited with quoting the phrase that art imitates life, since we're talking about storytelling. What I, from what I know about history, he probably stole that phrase from <laughs> Kemet or Egypt from Imhotep. But Oscar Wilde came behind him 
and he said that life imitates art. And in his case, meaning Chad's, it seems that life is imitating art. And if we pay attention in this thing called storytelling, a story is being told to us all and it's often played out in cinema. As I take my seat, I wanna say that before the pandemic, Netflix had a movie called Pandemic. <laughs> Thank you for honoring my brother. And I wanna say, Chad will always love you. And mom and dad will always love you. My mom was supposed to give this speech, but she, she gave it to me. And to me, you and daddy are also legends because it takes a king and a queen to create a king. The cast of Disney Animation's Academy yes. Award-winning yes. Incontinence. Yes! Yes! Oh my God, yes! Hey, 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 hey. Hello, everyone! Oh my God, Disney Legends was just really well done this year. Definitely worth um, going just for the uh, just for the the cast of Frozen. Surprisingly, the cast of the Kanto. Oh my God! It just happened. It just happened. Yeah. Also, this got the uh, 100th anniversary pen. It looks pretty cool, though. I like, actually like it a lot. Definitely, it's a, definitely it's a keeper right here. All right, I'm finally here at the animation booth. That's why I mostly hang out anyway. So. Go check out the what's going on there. Hey guys, the 100th anniversary of one of my favorite animation studios. Wow, this is something I never expected to celebrate. 100 years of classics to modern classics. Yeah, I just talked to a couple people that work at Disney Animation. It's just, this is my place, man. This is where I belong. I belong to these people. I don't belong in the average world. I belong in the Disney Animation world. Yeah. Here it is, the new characters for Strange Worlds coming in November. We got Mirabelle, we got Olaf, Anna and Elsa, Raya, Hiro Hamada, and the others. Yeah. One of the greatest animation studios ever. One of the best of all time right here. Here it is, more stuff for Strange Worlds, which I cannot wait to watch. Yeah, here's some concept art for the for Strange World though. All the bizarre Bikini Bottom style of plants. That's pretty funny to me. But also creative. Man, I cannot wait to see this. I cannot wait to see this. Alright guys, so they're going to reveal something really unique. They're going to announce the next film in the Disney Animation canon. This, I believe their 62nd feature. So... Yeah, here we go guys. I cannot wait. I will be at the animation panel in a, bit, in a little bit. So as of now, this is a mystery until, until um, we're done with the video, I guess. All right, here we go. And a little extra for Pixar, you know? There's a May Lee um, statue right there. This is pretty cool. what it starts to look like on the back side. 
And the reason we have the light table underneath is so that we can tell if we have missed any parts uh, up to the lines. I don't know if you guys can see. All right, I just got my newest uh, Disney animation pin. It's gonna be next to my Encanto, Raya, and Frozen pins. And, and my landlord. So nice, isn't it? It must be one of those new creatures in Spring though. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to see um, the new Disney Pixar stuff. So I'm here with Rachel from Rachel Reviews. Say hi, Rachel. Hi. Yeah. You might remember her from the Animation is Film Festival um, vlog I did like several months ago. Yes. So we will be talking about the upcoming animated features from Disney Animation and Pixar. So what's your preconception on it? I'm super excited to hear more about Strange World and see what's coming up next year. Yeah. We don't know much. We know about Elemental, but we don't know much about it. We don't know what Disney's doing next year. So I'm really It's a mystery right now it. because yeah. it's well curtained because I already mentioned to to my to my yeah. viewers that it is curtain right now and they cannot know about it until later on yeah. in the video. So it's gonna so, be super fun. Yeah, and, and not just only the features but their shows. Like Win or Lose is Pixar's first original oh, yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be long formatted for like a few seasons at least. Yeah, that'll be fine. And, and we just don't know much about Strange World. So far. So I'm really looking forward to kind of getting a better idea of what that is. Because we've only gotten the teaser. Um, so uh, that's going to be fun. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Can't wait though. <laughs> well, since Disney's afraid of people like revealing secrets, it won't be recorded, guys. So I will have to talk about it afterwards. It's going to be crazy. Sorry guys. Alright, so off to the next scene I guess. I don't know, I ran out of ideas and dialogue. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Hi. with Sky Roberts, aka Austrian Disney Girl. Yeah, Aussie Disney Girl, that's yeah. me. So we're also gonna watch the animation panel. Yeah. It's not live action as they mentioned. Yes, I'm very excited for the animation in particular and Little Mermaid first look. That's gonna be... Hopefully they do more Little Mermaid there. Yeah, if we see like a yeah. trailer for the Little Mermaid, I, I think I'll faint. For the live action, I'm excited for Disenchanted. Oh yes, I did hear though that they might be doing that at the panel tomorrow and I do not want that to be true. Well, it's live action Disney, so yeah. it still counts though. Yeah, I think it works. I think tomorrow is more like Disney branded television, so. Yeah. We'll wait and see on that. But overall, animation, Yay! Pixar, this is the animation. Best We're ever. Doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> All right, so off to the next scene. Yes. Yeah. Right, Sky, anything else before we sign off? Um, I am in shock and awe. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, guys, they just told me that I could record, but not during the, the clips and sequences. So this is more like a first look type of reaction without showing you the footage, you know what I mean? Alright, so here we go. Holy shit, it's Amy Adams! I mean, there were several times where she just walk up to random people and go, Fairy tale montage in Andalusia. Yes, they're in couples therapy, but it's working out. Uh, and, uh, um, what have we been doing? Dance lessons? You know, slaying trolls? And yes, and I've, I've been learning to cook. Uh, no, we don't know. That part's not really in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> We've been being happy. We've been being very happy. Very happy. It's very happy. <laughs> but I hear you might be. And, as you mentioned, and you promised me I could make it a little scary. You told me that. Yes, I did. Well, obviously we can't, you know, make a scary movie just without a certain song.
great first princess. In revisiting these timeless classics, we keep a reverence for what we all love about them, but we also strive to bring something new and unexpected. The team we have assembled includes director Mark Webb and Tony, Grammy, and Oscar-winning songwriters Pasek and Paul of The Greatest Showman in our 2019 Aladdin. They are on board to craft some new songs to complement the classics. So, you know the big beats of this story, you know this story very well. So today, I would like to share a very, very early glimpse of two of the most iconic characters in the Disney world. Oh my god, it's Rachel Sanger. I mean, obviously, from Mary is it bigger than Mary Poppins Returns? I don't know. Does it get bigger? It's, it's as far as you can see. <laughs> the best fans in the world. Well, I feel very lucky. First of all, I just have to say. Biggest influence. It is so great to be here. It's been a while since we've seen each other. You know, a lot has happened in that time. And um, for us, to yeah. see a lot of oh my God, a couple streaming projects out into the world. We are so proud of these stories, and we're thrilled that they were able to find a home with all of you. Just yesterday, we released our brand new series, Cars on the Road. Yeah. So much fun. Check it out. So it's a plus. I will. Uh, these last few years, though, have been a time of great change in the world. And um, it's led us at Pixar to think about the future. Or if I'm channeling my inner Joe from Soul, I would ask, why are we here? What's our purpose? And I think for us, it's to tell great animated stories. Whether those are theatrical feature films, or streaming, or shorts, we think that telling stories is really foundational to who we are as people. They really define us. And we believe in the power of animation. It's such a great medium to reflect is, man. those stories of our own lives. So whether it's a jazz musician, or a 13-year-old Chinese-Canadian girl, or a fish, or a rat, these stories allow us to kind of step outside of our own lives and into someone else's. Thank 
stations and other worldly planets is true. And what if I told you that the first human to ever make contact is this kid? A young boy who finds it hard enough just to get to class on time. Well, that's what our film is about, and it is called Elio. Oh and my god! We're to be announcing it right now here at D23 Expo. I love how simple he looks. Elio is an 11 year old kid living on Earth who's a lot more artistic and creative than he is athletic or rough and tumble. <laughs> He's an ambitious dreamer, an avid indoorsman, and down to talk about his feelings. But one thing he can't figure out is how to fit in. And he lives with his mom, Olga, who runs a top secret military project to decode a strange signal from outer space. Oh my god. Figure out where it's coming from and who sent it. However, due to some extraordinary circumstances, it's Elio who makes first contact. And he's beamed up to space and transported across the galaxy to the Communiverse, which is like an intergalactic United Nations of advanced alien species. It's a sparkling space city filled with all sorts of alien architecture. This is outer space like no one has ever seen before. And it's filled with creatures of all shapes and sizes. It's here where Elio, a kid who struggles to fit in on Earth, accidentally becomes our planet's ambassador to the rest of the universe. <laughs> Ultimately, Earth's fate will rest on whether Elio can fight through his self-doubt and prove to the universe that the best part of being human is just being yourself even if yourself feels a little alien to everyone else. So that is Elio. It's like Planet 51, but better. ...become a great hero, but he couldn't do it without an amazing mother. Please welcome to the stage the voice of Elio's mom, America Ferreira!
first time in forever. And we get to share new stories with all of you. Brought to life through the magic of animation. And today, everything, everything we are sharing is truly never before seen. As you can tell, we're a little excited about 2023. I don't know, yeah. But at Walt Disney Animation Studios, the studio that started it all, on the eve of our 100th anniversary, we see today as a moment of privilege and promise. A privilege to be stewards of a studio in a dream that Walt and his brother Roy started a century ago. And a promise to continue to take risks in our storytelling and to explore and expand and turn the possible into the actual, just as Walt did. And it's in the spirit of our founder that we look ahead to the future. So let's begin. <laughs> We're gonna start with our two next projects coming to Disney Plus from Disney Animation. Disney Plus has given us and so many new opportunities to service new voices from outside and within our studio to create whole new worlds, like in the likes of which you haven't seen before, and to tell new stories with favorite beloved characters. And coming in November to Disney Plus from your favorite mammal metropolis, this is Zootopia Plus. Also coming to Disney Plus is a very special project. One of my goals has been to create more stories from around the world with storytellers from around the world. And to that end, we're excited to bring you our first original series, dreamed up and created in a most unique way. Back in 2018, I was reading the news and saw a headline, Pan-African comic book company hoping to kick Disney's, you know what. <laughs> and I was, well, I was intrigued. <laughs> so we reached out to the three founders of this company to see what they had in mind. And their story ideas absolutely blew us away. And I am excited that the first collaboration with an outside studio ever in our 100 years is with the three gentlemen I have the honor to introduce you to now. Please welcome to the stage our collaborators on the series of Waju, the Kugali founders, Olafakayu Ziki Adeola, Hamid Ibrahim, and Tolu Olafayeku. Yes! Our 61st feature nice. film will be in theaters this Thanksgiving. <laughs> Among our filmmakers, there's a very special director who has continued to push our storytelling forward, redefining the path for Disneyland animation along the way. He brought us the wondrous city of San Francisco, the Big Hero 6. Yeah. He then opened our hearts to the world of Kumandra. Yeah. <laughs> what we leave behind for the generations that follow, he's doing it again, in his strangest world yet. Oscar-winning director of Big Hero 6, Don Hall, is reteaming with the incredible co-writer of Raya, Kui Gwen, for this all-new adventure. So please welcome to the stage, director Don Hall and co-director and writer Kui Gwen. <laughs> adventure stories that we grew up with, specifically stories about a group of explorers that stumble upon a hidden world. And like those stories, Strange World is chock full of action, never before seen creatures, and unique environments that are full of surprises and dangers. But Strange World isn't just an adventure film. It's also a film about an amazing family and how they get past their differences to save the world. As fathers uh, ourselves, oh, the Bubba Boy's coming. Please welcome Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. <laughs> and Lucy 
Mm. Oh my god, yes. So Jay, this is your first time being in a Disney animated uh, movie. How's it felt? I mean, first of all, thank you, Donna Quinn. It's uh, being here is so cool to be with all you and to share this trailer for the first time. And I've always wanted to be in a Disney animated movie. Okay. So we've been talking a lot about our 100th anniversary. And you might be wondering what our 2023 feature film could possibly be. A few years ago, my fellow directors and I started talking about our hundred and our legacy. And we thought, what better way to celebrate a century of storytelling than to tell an original story with original characters and songs inspired by our legacy of films. And we started to dream and you know what they say about dreams. How did the wishing star, upon which so many of our beloved characters wish, come to be? I'm excited to announce our 2023 feature film, Wish. The Fantasia logo. This film means so much to all of us in the studio. And it has been an incredible collaboration across all the generations. I've had the honor to contribute as one of the writers on the film. Oh my god, yes. And the, <laughs> and the film couldn't be in better directorial hands. One is an incredible filmmaker trained by one of Walt's nine old men. And the other is the filmmaker that is blowing us away and leading the next generation at the studio. So please welcome to the stage my fellow Frozen director, the yes, yes. and joining Chris as director of Wish, Fawn, Bruce, and Thorne. Oh my god, I love Chris Buck. This is Chris Buck's next movie. Amazing. This is, uh, this is my third time here. I think the crowd gets better and better, don't you? And this is Juan's first time, so be nice. Of course. Thank you very much. different journeys to get here, but, you know, they had the ups and downs to get there. And through our experience, we realized that there truly is no greater power in the universe than someone with a true wish in their hearts. With that in mind, we created a world that is all about just that, wishing. Oh. A fantasy fairy tale kingdom that existed long before Snow White dreamed by her wishing well or Geppetto wished for Pinocchio to be a real boy. This is Rosas. But it's better known as the kingdom of wishes, because here, your wishes can literally come true. We looked back at some of our most beloved films, you know, the first animated features born of Walt's dream. And it got us thinking, what if we could blend the classic with contemporary for something completely new? So blending this... She's 17, yeah. She's driven, she's incredibly smart, and optimistic with a sharp wit, who cares endlessly about her community. Asha is also a leader in the making, although uh, even if she doesn't know it yet. Asha learns that it's not enough just to have a dream in your heart. Sometimes the bigger the wish, the harder the journey. In Asha's case, her journey puts her up against one of the most formidable foes in Disney history. Asha sees a darkness in the kingdom that nobody else does and must find a way to help the people she loves. So in a moment of desperation, Asha makes an impassioned plea to the stars, wishing with all her heart for guidance and help. 
and the power of her wish calls down an actual star from the sky. And this is star. Ooh. The answer to Asha's wish, the one that will help her through her journey. Star is a cosmic force made of things such as possibility, imagination, and hope. But Star is also a little ball of boundless energy, impossibly curious, and a giant beacon of chaos. <laughs> Star is far too evolved for language, only communicating through pantomime, an animated stream to bring to life. So here's an exclusive test. Which are a man who has been in every film of ours over a decade. Disney Animation's Good Luck Charm, Alan Tudyk! <laughs> So it's his movie. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. You are all looking very fine today. Not you. Not everybody else. <laughs> you look fabulous. Um, I cannot believe it has been 10 years. 10 years since I did my first role for Disney, which was King Candy. <laughs> <laughs> He was so fun and then he was so mean. <laughs> and in those 10 years, I have also, uh, oh, I played a search engine. Uh, knows more, knows more. Isn't that interesting? In Wrecking Ground, King. Uh, I also played a billionaire uh, who sounded exactly like me. So that was really easy. I knew him all day long. I was at Duke Weasel who <laughs> kicked donuts around and stuff like that. And I was also a wrestle too. <laughs> uh, I was Tuck, I did Tuck Tuck. Um, tuck Tuck didn't say a whole lot. But he did make this sound every once in a while. <laughs> Where's the toucan? <laughs> I was a toucan. Yeah, there he is. In, in Kanto, I he <laughs> made that sound from time to time. <laughs> Flying in, <laughs> fly <flying> out. <laughs> and then also in Moana. He's the lead, isn't he? And now the role that I've always wanted to play. A goat. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So this is Valentino. Oh, come on. He wears pajamas. Uh, now, what you're going to see is the very first test. That is the genius of Alan Tudor, too, because that was a lot of improv. So, Alan was amazing. To pay tribute to our legacy of 100 years, we also knew that this film had to be a musical. Right? We are being to, be to announce that the songs of which will be written by Grammy nominated artists to an Ooh, event. oh my god. In addition to her career as a performing artist, Julia has written songs for Dua Lipa, Pink, and Selena Gomez, to name a few. Okay. She is so amazing to work with. So this just barely scratches the surface of all that Wish has to offer, and there is so much more we want to share about our film. A film that I will say just might take the concept of Easter eggs to a whole new level. Oh my god. Uh, but you know that we have to keep some things a secret, so we want to thank you all. This has been, you have been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Fun. Okay. I Listen, we can't have this live audience here and not give them a little bit more, maybe. Well, song? Let's yeah, let's song. Let's what do you think, D23? Do you remember when Julie Michael sent us the very first song? Absolutely. The, the song is called More.
more for us. It's a song that truly captures that moment when Asha, having discovered a dangerous truth in her world, looks up to the stars for guidance and makes her wish. Well, I think there's no better way to truly kick off our 100th anniversary than to share that song with Disney's greatest audience. We thank you all for being here today. And we want to leave you with this exclusive performance. D23 Expo, here to sing more for us. Please welcome our leading lady, our Asha, the Academy Award winning actress, the one and only Ariana DeBose. Oh my God! I love her so much. I think I made that decision for them. Adriana's back again. Animation, happy 100th anniversary. You guys really truly inspire me who I want to be. And seeing Chris Bug again on stage, I cannot wait what he has to deliver for, for his next film, Wish. This is what it is. This is Disney's 100th anniversary. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Okay, you guys, before we go, we're gonna check out this booth before we leave. Yeah, all right, amazing. all right, here we go. This is it, you guys. This is it. This is Disney's Animation's next movie, their 100th anniversary movie, Wish. Just like you saw in the video. There you go. You can write your wish down and then post it up on the wall. Can I say my wishes or you wanna sure. keep it a secret? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> like, can I say my wish with, yeah. Uh, can I say my wish out loud? Yeah. Okay. You know what I wish for? To join you guys one day at the oh, animation team. I mean, that's a good wish. It is, actually. Yeah. Luckily, I do have friends who work at, at the studio as well. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited for Wish, though. It does look beautiful. Chris yeah. Bug is going to nail this. I know very it. very excited for it. Yeah. Chris Bug, he's definitely a legend. He's my type of filmmaker. I, I grew up watching. Oh, super good. Yeah. 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 Here's a better look of the new character for, for Disney Animation's Wish. There you go. I did it, you guys. I got it. Wish. It's going to be for me for a long time. All right. This is the end of uh, day one of D23. Just want to say thank you guys for watching everything. And I'll see you guys um, in the next part, okay? All right. Let's go. It's Wally! He's getting in the Criterion Collection. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> All right, guys, day two of D23 Expo. So, yeah, I'm back again for, for some other crazy stuff that's gonna happen. Yeah, so here we go, guys. Ah, it's good to be back at 7 a.m. in the morning. 7 a.m., waking up in the morning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go downstairs. <laughs> nah, I'm not singing that song again. I just wanna check out the, the building for a second. Just do some B-roll, you guys. Yes, I'm Sarah Ray, Marvel panel time. Look behind it's you. It's gonna be a good time. This is standby, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad Started you're at standby. Yeah. Started at 5 a.m. in the morning while I was sleeping, now, leaving the TV sleep on. Yeah. Sleep. Yes. 
so good. And watching so adults good. swim last night. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like 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 a big boy. <laughs> so yeah, seriously, guys, this is standby for for the MCU stuff. Yes. That's it. This is it. Yeah, we're at it. All right. All right, guys. Um, they're gonna prohibit um, um filmmaking, and I uh, can't really show anything. I'm sorry, guys. We'll be back later. We'll tell you what happened. Exactly, Sky. MCU panel, 20th century panel, Lucasfilm panel, here I am. I don't know where to start. Isn't that right, Scott? Yay! Hi! Yeah, indeed. It's going to be so much fun. Fun. Yeah. Best time ever. Here we go. Oh my god, he's here, you guys. He's here. such an incredible experience for all of us, giving the opportunity to us to, to make these films for you. And I think, uh, I'm very proud to say. I'm very proud to say that this one is fantastic. I cannot wait, man. And this is one of the reasons. Indiana Jones movies are, are about mystery and adventure, but they're also about heart. And, uh, <laughs> I'm really, really happy that we have, we have a really human story to tell, as well as a movie that will kick your ass. <laughs> yes, let me kick my ass, please. So I'm delighted to be here again. Maybe for the... Oh. Not me. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I will not fall down for you again. <laughs> but thank you so much. <laughs> And thank you to Mango for picking up, for picking up the, the, the pieces and making a spectacular, spectacular film. Thank you. You know, one thing I want to say is when Harrison and I first started talking about what we're doing. I've never seen anything like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This team has put together 37 interconnected films and series over the past 14 years, and it actually feels like they're just getting started. Kevin Feige has been the creative force of Marvel Studios. Since the first Iron Man, all those Marvel ties go all the way back to the first X-Men movie in 2000. I remember the first one. He's an incredible filmmaker who keeps us all on the edge of our seats. Please welcome to the stage, Kevin Feige.
for letting us do that. And I want to thank our composer, Mark Shaman, for putting this together. Oh my God, I love Mark Shaman. Show. We had a chance meeting many years ago, and his husband Lou is a huge Marvel fan. So when we called and said, Hey, we got this idea for Hawkeye, he was there. And when we said, Hey, we have this idea for D23, he's been working for weeks and weeks and weeks on this. So thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. There it is. The first, maybe the last, Marvel musical sequence at D23. Uh, that's, uh, that's my favorite. You know, another one of my favorite things we got to do a little earlier this summer which is tell fans about what we have coming up. And we told you about a lot. We talked about the multiverse saga. We talked about Avengers, the Kang Dynasty coming. We talked about Avengers Secret, Secret Wars, Wars coming. But this is D23, and I don't want to just talk about a bunch of stuff. I want to show you a bunch of stuff. Ryan is hard at work in the cutting room, and he said, do I have to come today? I said, it would really be nice if you could. They really want to see you. They're really fortunate, along with, with my company, Proximity Media, to partner with Kevin and a great, and a great staff at, at Marvel Studios to produce a, a show for you guys on Disney Plus. That's a Bowery read. Um, and, and Kevin was super gracious to bring a little something, you know, to see from that as well. Our companies are literally hard at work in Atlanta right now, working on that in Chicago, uh, going back and forth. So, so Dominique isn't here. Um, we brought somebody incredibly special to the Disney family, um, playing Parker Robbins, aka The Hood, Mr. Anthony Ramos. Oh! Oh! Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Man. This movie, this is a very big movie. This is a very different kind of a movie. It is a begins a direct line into Phase Five, right into the Kang Dynasty. The We're friends in real life. We actually do. We are. But not that guy, that guy's not in the club. Kevin. Oh, now, Paul, tell us what it's Wait. like. Come here. <laughs> Paul. Yeah. Tell, tell us what it was like when you were named the sexiest man of the year. Yeah, the sexiest man ever. No, you don't have to do that. No, he's not. Oh, good. It's uh, gorgeous. It's a live, yeah, technical thing. No, it's, uh, all I can say is, uh, you know, I, I've met Michael B. Jordan, and I know for a fact how false the title is, and I would hold that. You see that guy and think, no, yeah, that tracks, that makes sense. Very flattering, and uh, very, very wrong. Michael Giacchino. Hi. Hello. You may know Michael is an amazing composer of such things as every Spider-Man film we've made. Such things as Up, yeah. Ratatouille, yep. Yep. Jurassic World, yep. Rogue One, yep. Yep. What did I miss? The Batman? The Batman! The Batman! Oh. Batman! Uh, he is an amazing... The Incredibles. Who else? Shout him out! <laughs> Inside Out. Ours too. Inside Out. <laughs> yeah. He could be here for any number of those reasons. He could have a whole panel, a whole orchestra for any of those things. But he's here because he also is a very talented director. You know, wait, wait, before we get into the incredible Gael Garcia Barnell and Whoa. Laura Donnelly. Whoa. Yeah. Come on. We've been talking about this for a very long time. It is based in part on a very famous comic series involving Stark armor getting out into the wrong hands. We're talking about our very first season two. We're making a season yes. two for the first time, and it's a little show called Loki. Yeah! Yes! They are shooting 
right now in the UK uh, as we speak, but they wanted to say hi, so they got on a plane and came here. Ladies and gentlemen, Oh my God, John Middleston. Sophie Oh my God. Mr. Wilson, and Thank you guys. They literally are shooting, they got on a plane, and they get on a plane as soon as they leave the stage to go back. But thank you for being here, all of you. Oh, Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. One time or another, in season two, we're going to answer it. How did I get here? Yes. Single episode of WandaVision was directed by one man. His name was Matt Shackman. He's over there somewhere. And I just brought him to say hi because he is directing Fantastic Four. Yeah. Fantastic Four! Fantastic Four, as you said, coming to phase six. There he is. There's Matt. Now, why is Matt not on the stage? Because we have nothing else to say about it today. <laughs> Other than... It is coming soon. Yeah, and there'll be another D23 Expo before then. So Matt will be up here at the next one. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Matt Shackman, everybody. Thank you. Cody Lightning. Chaska Spencer. The incredible Brand Green. And Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> we saw what happened to you at the end of Hawkeye. What's it like being back in this series? It's great, it's great. I, first, I want to thank Grant for including me as one of the kids. I don't know if you <laughs> you get extended over like that, so I, think, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I don't know, it's a great cast. I was just so impressed by all these people. I think they love show. with these two gentlemen together, so it's pretty amazing. You all learned that there's a new Captain America. His name is Sam Wilson. <laughs> and now he's coming to the big screen in our upcoming film, Captain America, New World Order. Please welcome to the stage our director, Julius Anak. Captain America himself, Mr. Anthony Mackey. Yeah. From the show, we have Jamie Ramirez. We have the incredible Carl Lumley returning. Unable to join us today, but we've cast a new character. Uh, the actress's name is Shira Haas. She's playing an amazing Marvel character named Sabra for the first time in the MCU. Ooh. And for the first time in 14 years, coming back to the MCU, the incredible actor Tim Blake Nelson as Whoa. the leader. Now, Julian, you know, the Captain America film is that there currently is a world without the Avengers. Sam Wilson finds himself as Cap at a time where there's not an organization of, of Avengers. But just because there's not an organization of the Avengers doesn't mean there's not a group of superheroes in the MCU. Not a group perhaps as lofty as the Avengers, but there is a group, and they're called the Thunderbolts. Oh my God, yes. The Thunderbolts are finally coming to the screen and they are a ragtag bunch, and I want you to meet them. Starting with our director, Mr. Jake Schreier. I also want you to say hi to Julia Louise Dreyfus. Oh my God, yes. She was at the previous expo. We got the return of David Harper as the Red Guardian. <laughs> John Common as Ghost. <laughs> Wyatt Russell is back as John Walker, AKA US Agent. <laughs> Not here with us today, but Olga Kirilenko is back as Taskmaster. And there's somebody else who couldn't be here with us today, but she wanted to say a quick hello. Yeah! <laughs> 
23, it is Florence Pugh here. I am so gutted that I'm not there in person to say hi, but I am unbelievably excited to be joining this cast. So please, from me, can you share a lot of love to my castmates? Hi. Bye for now. Yelena, hello. Your thunderbolts pass. Jake, we can say nothing. You can't say anything. What can you say? That's correct. That's, that's correct. It comes out next July. Yes. Yes. The Marvels, Mia DaCosta. The Mama Khan herself, Miss Marvel. Yes. Yes. From one division, Monica Rambo. Captain Marvel. Free Larson! Free Larson! Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the big finale. The first time the three of them been together on stage. The first time any of them been to D23. Yeah. And Amon, is this the first time you've been in front of 7,500 fans? Give or take it. <laughs> Man, Amon went to a pretend convention called AvengerCon in Miss Marvel, but now you come to a real one. It's not too bad. Yeah. I'm having trouble breathing today. It's great. Yeah. It, it's, it's not pretend. She is a bigger fan uh, than any of you. And we didn't know this when we cast her. And we regret it only slightly. But it, it's remarkable. Tiana joining us in WandaVision, and now you've already shot this incredible appearance. What's it like? It's been amazing. Uh, you know, Monica got a little bit of powers or something, so we're gonna see how those pop off in the Marvels. Very excited. <laughs> Bree, you're back. You brought more Marvels with you. Thank you for that. It was incredible. My pleasure, my pleasure. How is it? Your next movie. Uh, this one? Uh, I can't tell you about it, but it's incredible. I had such an amazing time with these beautiful women, inside and out. I learned so much, and it was really nice to have a team. I had a team. <laughs> a team brought together by Nia. Nia, thank you for joining the MCU. Oh, okay. How's it been? Um, my favorite part, besides working with these amazing women, finally being part of a universe I've loved since I was a kid, is accosting you every time I see you and pitching you 17 movies. So, thank you. That's true. Thank you. One of the greatest you. directors of all time, and Avatar stands as the biggest movie of all time. The next installment, Avatar The Way of Water, is coming out this December, and I promise you, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. And to share more, direct from New Zealand, please join me in welcoming Jim Cameron. Hi, Jim. Hey, Al, how you doing? It's going great. Uh, I know you can't be here because you're, you're finishing up the film. Uh, can you tell us how it's going? Well, it's going great, and the, the stuff coming in from what it did, Jittle, the VFX, are looking spectacular. So right now, it's pretty hectic around here. We're finishing up, as you know, a five-year production cycle that started, uh, we started capture and photography in September of, of 17. So this has been a bit of an odyssey, you know, shooting and capturing for movie two, movie three, and, and the first part of movie four. Because, you know, you know this is a, a bigger saga that's told over a, a series of films. So we're super excited to be finally finishing up uh, movie two. I know everybody's been waiting a long time. Uh, hopefully uh, uh, you'll see something today and you'll be able to decide whether it's all been worth it. Uh, we, uh, we also, it's been very hectic around here because uh, we remastered Avatar, uh, the first film, for a whole new generation of, of uh, movie fans coming up that never got to see it in a theater, which, as we both agree, is exactly the place it, it should be seen. So, 4K remaster in 3D, obviously, uh, 48 frames per second, uh, high dynamic range, Atmos 9.1 sound, all that. It looks and sounds better than it's, than it's 
ever looked, and it's coming out in a couple of weeks. So hopefully that will be the drum roll and remind people about the story of the world and so on as we go into the release of uh, Avatar The Way of Water uh, on December 16th. All very exciting. I'd, I'd like to, uh, to call up to the stage uh, John Landau, my producing partner on Titanic and Avatar. And, and, uh, uh, howdy, Jim. Howdy. howdy, John. And our amazing, some of my dearest friends, our amazing cast, uh, Zoe Saldana. I thought I'd start off by sort of just asking a couple questions of our cast. So I'm not, Steve, I'm a Sigourney. I forgot your question. <laughs> bad. What? How can you not forget Sigourney Weaver? Oh, that is messed up. Well, actually, he did kind of introduce me because I'm one of the Sully kids. <laughs> I'm one of the family, and uh, that has been one of the most awesome adventures I could ever hope to have, especially with this particular um, uh, Avatar family. It's been a real honor and a, a thrill. It's been great to have you a part of that. And you get to play a character that you never thought you would get to play. Uh, only Jim is crazy enough to have written this character for me and I'm so grateful and so excited. Say hello to the D23 group, everybody. Hi. So Jim, I'm going to take this opportunity to throw it back to you in New Zealand, and uh, I think you have something else that you want to share with everybody. Well, we figured everybody's been waiting such a long time to, uh, you know, to finally see something. So since everybody's together there, you know, all our, our film fans and and uh, you know we've got the cast right there. Um, why don't we show you D23 Expo? You are going to be the first audience to get a sneak peek at a few scenes from That's Avatar The Way of Water. We're getting 3D glasses. 3D! Thank you so much. Head back to Pandora and enjoy. Yes. I get to keep up. Let's go on. Oh my god, thank you so much. Well, behold, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I can't see, I'm sorry, but this is these are Dolby Digital 3D glasses right here. This is so cool. Dolby, you can see the logo. I'm just excited about that. Come on up. Come on, John. Come up. Take a final bow. Thank you all so much. Thank you, D23. Have a great afternoon. That's our show. Finally, we're getting more 20th century stuff here. This is pretty cool, though. The artwork is done by Dylan Cole. Dylan, if you're watching this, good job, man. Look, it's the director. So cool. Let's take a couple shots here, you guys. And before you ask, I can't meet them right now because there's a stupid reservation line for it. The stupid reservation system screwed everything over again. I remember the, the previous year, you can't even reserve, because, oh my god, it's complicated. It should be for everyone to line up for and see, see your favorite directors. It's just not fair, though. I mean, I want to, this should be a standby queue as well. It's just upsetting that I can't really talk to them for a bit and not come nearby. It's, it sucks. I'm sorry for being a little downer for a minute, but this is unfair. For reservations is fine. I meant, like, standby for other people that do want to meet them. Oh my god. It's okay. I, I'll be fine. I'll be fine, guys. I'll, I'll still see um, the filmmakers anyway. Like, you know, in person. I don't know why, but I love keep coming back here, you know? Animation, man. Still my thing. Yeah, I'm just re-looking more. You can even see the Sorcerer's Apprentice hat over there. So unique. 
buildings are nice. Building. <laughs> it's a nice booth you guys have. Okay. Such a nice booth you have. Oh, thank you. Of course. Thanks. Oh my god. Getting full very soon. <laughs> yeah. So you're Amber, right? This is in your tag. Yeah. yeah. Where'd you work on? Um, do Strange World or Wish? Uh, I'm in production. In production. <laughs> Just keeping it tight, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish you guys the best on on thank it. Thank you. Of course, I just love coming here. Yes, here it is again. No strange world stuff from yesterday. Pretty unique. All the and here's um, Uganda, a new um, Disney Plus series from Disney Animation and Wonder Comics, you know, the, the African Comics Company. They're collaborating with Disney Animation, which is nice. Hey. Sorcerer Mickey. All right. Hey, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm just chilling around. Nice. Did you get a button? I actually got one already. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I'm just here to say hi to everyone, especially the other animators as well. Nice. Yeah. I'm glad you're having a good time. Yeah. I just stopped by and see the, the filmmakers of Strange World. Oh, what'd you think of it? Well, I already saw the footage yesterday, which it looks great, though. I cannot wait to see it. It looks action packed. Awesome. Yeah. How do you feel like it? From yesterday's panel. Uh, well, what was the footage for? Like, uh, uh, Strange World. Was it good? It looks awesome. Ah. Yeah. Oh yes, it was. Oh, look guys, you know who he is, right? You know. If you don't know, then now you know. Thank you so much. Oh my god, Chris. It's been a while. You might remember me from, from three years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's Jonathan, by the way. Yeah. I had, longer, I had longer hair, that's why. Oh, okay. Yeah, not anymore. Well, welcome back. I'm back. I'm so excited for your next film. Right Thank behind you, you, right there. Thank you. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm very excited for this. It's just, I'm happy to, to see you directing with another person again. And Jennifer Lee writing this. I mean, she's... Oh, so you were there at the presentation. I was, look. You can see by the posters because they were giving me the posters. Yeah, so far what you guys have, I just cannot wait. I just know you're going to do something amazing with it. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Excited about yeah. Right now, so. Yeah. You want to say hi to everyone, especially the animators around here. Yeah. Are you saying hi to us, or am I saying? Everybody, of course. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> especially the animators here. I mean, everyone's doing a great job at Disney Animation. Well, thank you. It's nice seeing you again, Chris. Good to see you too. Of course. It has happened again. Chris Buck yet again. Oh my God. Two times the charm, I guess I would say. That's awesome. Chris Buck yet again. Oh my god, I just can't believe it happened. Oh my god, guys, it's the producer of Frozen. How are you doing? Right now, yeah, good. are you coming here for this today? We'll do this yeah, today. I will we'll be here. Today All right, that's awesome. I cannot wait to see Wish. I just saw the footage you had last night. Oh, it looks great. I mean, for our 100th anniversary for this, for this amazing studio. Yeah. I know. Sharing more with the world. All right, how about a. Said it. I am nervous as hell, but I did it because most these are filmmakers I grew up with watching like, their content. I love it so much. How are you doing? How was your D23 Expo? The best so far. I said this last time, after three years, we're back here, so we're glad that you could come and join us. Well, today we've got the filmmakers from the upcoming film in 2023, Wish. So I don't know if any of you have uh, have heard the announcements yesterday, but we'll get to that shortly. Yep. But first, I want to make our introductions here. My name is Fox Carney. I'm the manager of research at the Walt Disney Animation Research Library. Nice. And I have the honor to introduce to you the following esteemed panel. So we've got our Academy Award-winning director, Chris Buck. He directed both Frozen and Frozen 2. Alongside Disney Animation Chief Creative Officer Jen Lee, and Chris made his directing debut on Tarzan. And having launched his career yeah. at Disney Animation as an animator on The Fox and the Hound. Yep. Yes. Yeah, before like, uh, designing characters for The Rescuers Down Under and Little Mermaid. Yes, yes that yes. is true. Next to Chris is Fawn Vera Sunthorn. Yeah. She's 
the head story of the Oscar nominated Maya and the Last Dragon. Yeah! Ooh, story artist who's contributed her talents to the Oscar winning features Frozen, Zootopia, as well as Moana, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Frozen 2. Oh. On. How you doing? <laughs> Next up on is Oscar winning producer Peter Del Vecca. Ooh. Also produced the Princess of the Frog and his the associate producer on Treasure Planet and Chicken Little. <laughs> now, Peter o now oversees the production of all Disney animation feature films as senior vice president of production. And little, little note, um, I went through orientation at Disney feature animation the same day Peter did. So look where Peter is. <laughs> and next to Peter is Juan Pablo Reyes. He served as a senior creative development executive on a variety of Disney animation films, including the Oscar-winning Encanto, as well as the upcoming feature Strange World. He's also written The Art of Encanto and The Art of Strange World, so make sure you buy his books, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, well, first let's do a little recap of what your announcement of yesterday about Wish, because we're coming on 100 years of the Walt Disney Company and starting animation. So take it away, Chris. What is, start, what is what is Wish and what can we know today? <laughs> well, um, so Wish is, it is an all new uh, feature. It's original, original characters, original music, uh, but it is inspired by all of, of Disney's films. And uh, we went back and looked at, you know, Walt's uh, influence on all the films and how much, you know, how much he inspired us, inspired the world. And so we hope to do with this film, sort of embrace our legacy, what we've done, but then also embrace the future. So the past and then the future. Let's start the next hundred years. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Hopefully we'll be here for D23s all through that too. <laughs> Learn more from the journey. So. That's what we explore in the film, and, and, and hopefully it inspires others to to sort of pursue their wishes. Know that it's probably not going to be easy to attain, but at least in the end, it, it will be worth it. And I know we talked about what our wishes were from the beginning. Go ahead, Fun. Yeah. Well, my wish since I was a kid was to work at Disney Animation. And now look at it. <laughs> <laughs> What was it about Disney that made you want to work for Disney? When when I was a kid, I watched so many of the animated content, but right? Disney is always the one that has the humor and the heart. And I remember watching a short, and it was a little cowboy riding a horse in his dreams, and there was no words. And I grew up in Thailand, so I'm like, I can understand everything that is shown here. It's done without any language barriers. I was really inspired by that. Yes, from a cowboy needs it needs a horse. I remember that. Yes, that's one of my favorites from the fifties. I love that. And you had a journey. You had a wish, obviously, to. Well, ours was that. ours was the same. I, I uh, uh, Pinocchio, to this day, is still my favorite animated movie, and uh, that was the first movie that I saw in the theaters, and I, I loved it. I, I, I probably saw it when I was. I did not see the original release. Which was 1940. 1940. I am old, but I'm not that old. And so I saw a re, re, re release when I was like four or five. Saw it on the big screen, fell in love with it. I think I, I, that's probably the day I fell in love with the animation. And uh, just everything about Pinocchio, I just adore. So, and I think I, I, think I was drawing all the time, and, and eventually, yes, I wanted to work at Disney. It was like just a a dream and actually first time I came to California though we were driving my parents we were just visiting and didn't even get near Disney but we drove by Hanna-Barbera Studios oh. if y'all remember Hanna-Barbera yeah. uh -huh. and that's actually that was the one I said that's where I'm gonna work someday <laughs> I didn't get that wish oh. <laughs> but sometimes the wishes that you get Yes, that's more important than the uh, I got an I, I, wanted. I did want to work at Disney. It's yes. proof positive. Yeah. And, and Peter, have, have you been steeped in Disney since childhood, or what's your your journey? I think, what was uh, your similar to Chris, I saw 
uh, Bambi in the theater for the first time. Again, not the original. <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, it has such a range of emotion from the Mother Die to then the comedy of Thumper that it, it really uh, made an impression on me. And I think it even reflects in the films we make now. When you when you go through those range of emotions uh, throughout a film, it really makes you feel like you've experienced something. So that was my first. It's been sort of instrumental and yeah, sort of beyond. We have sort of a frozen uh, trust that we have that reviews all the publishing materials, all the marketing materials, the uh, uh, consumer products, and uh, you were a part of that for probably the first year. We were meeting yeah. at that time probably an hour or two every day. At this point, I think we have an hour long meeting every week. But that's what it's been ten years since I started. Working. Yes. And we're still uh, approving new product and approving new uh, publishing every day, every week. And as producer of Princess and the Frog, you were involved in, again, you've got a Disney Plus series that you have it is. put into that, and also theme parks and such. Yeah, it's, it's exciting to see that film uh, kind of come around and, and uh, get new life in it by the, the Disney Plus series, and of course the parks and race movie. That, that was a great project. I enjoyed it. Obviously, that was a hand-run film, and, and I yeah. love being a part of that uh, as well. Yeah. And, and Peter mentions hand-drawn, and now we have more digital films. Chris, as you straddle kind of both, <laughs> how do you how do you help infuse our more yeah. digital films with those, those principles? I, well, I. There's no difference when you're directing between directing a hand-drawn film and, and CG. You're, you're directing the, the story and the characters. That's that's the same. I mean, I again, I started as a hand-drawn animator, so I have a, a passion for it. I love it. Um, I think one thing that, that helped throughout the years was that, you know, we had Glenn King, who was very instrumental, and he was one of my mentors, too. Um, I worked with him on Fox and the Hound. Is that Glenn helped on Tangled? He helped the CG animators really see the poses. He see the silhouette, the beautiful silhouette that we do in, with hand drawn, um, and also the beautiful appeal. You know, you've got also Mark Hen and Eric Larson who are just masters at that, and they're always there to help us. But there's something about the hand drawn appeal. Um, the simplicity of what they do and trying to get that into the CG characters. It's not always easy. And so they were, again, they were very instrumental. Glenn, like, like I said, very instrumental. Untangled, sort of set that up. Then, you know, and, and keep that, that alive. So even though it's CG, you still, I don't know, hopefully you feel that there's, there's something, you know, yeah. hand drawn about and it. And I feel like Tangled really set the bar of what combination of those two artists. So I watch it and I would just randomly pause for the frame and there were always always good posts. And so I was like, oh good way to study a pose and I'm drawing and so yeah. things one do for fun. Yeah. <laughs> now Afon, did you have any mentors or, or did you have to learn the whole story process on your own or I learned from everyone I work with. Uh, but I do have a mentor on Raya, it's John Ripa. Yeah. And he's kind of show me how to uh, to be ahead of how to be ahead of story because I usually just focus on my scene, making sure things are good. And as the head of story, now you have to focus on everyone having a, a great scene. How do you bring the best out of people and, and really focus on what their strengths are versus giving them notes about oh, you're, this is not good enough for five flaws. Yeah, that can John be... works on Tarzan too. Yeah. It's all about Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that could be tough. How do you communicate to somebody you could do it better or you could do it in a certain way that we know you're capable of? Yeah, and, and I love it. That, you know, it's, we don't do stuff on paper very much anymore, but we still draw on uh, a Cintiq. You guys know what a Cintiq is? Yeah. Like a big monitor, right? And I have a few like moments that I'm like, this is very quintessential Disney experience when a person will sit down on someone's desk and then draw over to communicate like this is how you push the pose. This is what it means to have an appeal in characters acting. And even though we're not animating, I feel like that is a skill that really good for story artists to have. 
because we're communicating with drawings. And the drawings only flash on screen for a second, not even sometimes. We just have to have all the clarity that Chris mentioned. And the computer can sometimes be a little bit tempting because you can iterate so much. You can make so many versions. So how do you know when to stop? Bible story there. Um, I remember when our tech partner, Lisa Keen, uh, was transitioning from using oil paint, literally oil paint backgrounds, to computer, and she resisted it. She loved the smell, she loved the feel of the oil paint. But when she transitioned to um, uh, digital and discovered the undo button, she realized how much she loved it. As a painter, she said, we will always take it one brush stroke too far and ruin the painting. But obviously, with computer, that undo button uh, helps tremendously. <laughs> we may, may be passionate in our discussions, but everyone is just trying to make the movie as good as it can. And Disney doesn't stop. It's not, when the movie gets good, it's not enough. It has to be great. And uh, those last few months, uh, we can make just those last weeks in the movie that really truthfully make it from being a good movie to a great movie. And that's what I love about this animation is, is we, we don't stop until they yank it out of our hands and put it in the theater. It's like a, never, a movie is never done, it's only released. That's right. That's right. Very true. But with everything that goes into it, uh, uh, talk a little bit about the music. Obviously, we're surrounded by some of the music here, but you've worked on films that have had amazing yeah. music, yeah. Tarzan, Frozen, Frozen 2. Yeah. Tell us about very lucky importance and, and how you even work with music and people such as. I, I always looked at musicals and I think you know I, I love musicals and, and growing up with the Disney musicals. To me, I looked at, 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 at a musical as sort of a, the, a bonus to it, you know, because you get to the songs you take away from the film that can become part of your life, right? You, you bring so much of that to the songs, and so to me, that I, I love working on these movies, and then I think the musicals are lucky enough to be sort of have that, that extra bonus feature to them. But, but, and the music, you know, uh, they can be, they can be, you know, I've worked on movies where the, the music is sung by the characters, right, like Frozen, but then Tarzan was very different in that it was, I think we started off with, with Phil Collins, we said, you know, we're gonna do, you know, one where the characters sing, and he goes, oh, I don't really do Broadway songs, and then we're like, yeah, I know. But what turned out is that, I mean, he was right. We started putting up songs, and his demos of the songs were so beautiful with his voice that we put that up against the sequences, and we went, well, wait a second. So Phil, Phil's voice is actually Tarzan's inner voice. Right? So Tarzan didn't have to sing, the character didn't have to sing, but you kind of put Phil's voice in there. Phil is singing for Tarzan. So a different way of looking at the music, um, you know, so you just, you adapt to who you've got, uh, where we were working with at the time. But I, 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 to me, the musicals are just so exciting. You know? And sometimes you get a surprise, like Let It Go, all of a sudden it becomes everybody is singing it. People yeah. were already singing that song when before the movie comes out. We see the screenings, people are humming it in the hallway. Yeah. Like, this one's gonna be something. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those those earworms. I mean, we kind of we kind of knew from the beginning. Well, there's no way we predicted what happened. With no, it. we didn't know that, but we knew we had something special, and it really keyed us in. It really who Elsa was in a way. Yeah. Uh, and as Jen would often say, we went back and rewrote the beginning of the movie to lead to that song. So. Sometimes story leads to the song, but sometimes the song can be inspiring to us and helps change the song. How much longer? How much more time do we have? Uh, we basically have money. Oh, no, sorry. You mean here? Just, 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 oh, yeah. just about five minutes or so? Uh, okay, we have time for maybe like, do we have one question from the uh, audience or so? I'm just... just... No, 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 I have no question. Just one? <laughs> wow. Well, we'll see. Okay, and well, Paolo, are you, you going to work on an Art of Wish book? Uh, we're working with other people because right now it's a lot of work. <laughs> okay. right. But uh, I'm very excited to help on it somehow. Yeah. Well, we're all looking forward to Wish and seeing what you all bring to it and what you bring to the screen. Yes, we're here for now.
These are the directors of ELO from Pixar's uh, upcoming feature for 2024. I'm glad that the co-director of um, Coco, I believe he's co-director, the co-writer, is working on this. Truly another animation fantastic day, I must say. So worth it, man. I'm going to check out the Marvel booth. You know, it looks, it looks kind of cool though. I like, to how, I like how it looks. This, this is a real life event, this con. Alright, so I'm currently on standby for, for the Encanto experience coming up very soon. Luckily, I'm like one of the earliest people, so I might have a better chance on it. I'll update in a second to see if I make it in or not. Oh, looks like we're gonna get in, hopefully. Thank God. Oh, almost there though. Sisters, they said recording is blah. I can't speak. I'm sorry. I lost train of thought. They said recording is prohibited, but I don't know. Well, I won't even record much anyway. I met him. Remember, I met him, guys. Yeah. <laughs> 
what is it about this cast that brought this family to life the way they did? Oh, I mean, uh, it's, it's the greatest cast I've ever worked with. I think the, the most beautiful. You know the other cast is going to be waiting outside. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. You will all have the chance to experience your favorite Encanto songs like never before in the dazzling new concert event, Encanto at the Hollywood Bowl! Oh, that's Magically transform into Casa Montreal for these two enchanting acts. Go get the tickets. Hold on. Wait a minute. And you don't want to miss this. And we have something special just for you. D23 Expo. You're getting the chance to get your tickets for this special event before they go. Come on, fail to the public. All right. Get your phones right now. Go to Ticketmaster.com on September 22nd from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific and enter the code Encanto Bowl D23 to unlock pre-sale access. We don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. All right, let's try it one time before the music. Are you ready? Or do we need to go out there with some arepas to get you ready to go? All right, let's go. You're going to sing with us. We're going to get warmed up. Are you ready to sing? We don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. no. We don't talk about Bruno. I know, it's fine, nice to meet you, Adessa. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Oh, I finally did it, you guys. I finally met Adessa. She's been a Twitter friend of mine for almost a year now, and finally seeing her in person on that stage, that was a big deal for me. I'm glad I just went forward with it. I don't even care if I get stopped or not. I just want to say hi to Adessa, and that's it. And yeah, she, I, she recognized me, though. It was so awesome. Yeah, I believe she did. Overall, there's a couple more things I have to do before I sign up for today, actually. Like the, sorry, like for, um, let's see, the Disney Plus, they're doing like some sort of Muppets in person thing, and and I got reservations for Zootopia, Zootopia Plus, so yeah, I wanna check that out though. Oh man, those statues from Disney Animation. I miss that statue so much. Hey, it's another Disney animator named Pace. Hello. <laughs> hey, it's for you too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. How's it going? It's great. I mean, I'm starting to get more friends from the busy animation studios. Isn't yeah, awesome? you're a great guy, man. It's yeah. Awesome to see Can I see your cab? So. It's Raya, right? Yeah, of course. This is yeah. uh, the Raya and the Last Dragon right here. So. Yeah, I also met Carlos Lopez Estrada a few months ago. Yeah, he's a great yeah, guy. Yeah, not awesome just director. him, but also Kelly Marie Tran. But Kelly, too? Yeah, yeah they're, they're both wonderful the one human only beings. Raya, right? Yeah, so. my channel has that, like, all recorded. Oh, amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah. nice to meet you, man. Yeah, it's great to meet you. Yeah. Uh, ah, it's them again. My favorites. So happy for Chris and, and the crew making another feature. Hopefully, um, well, hopefully their hopefully Wish is really, really good, like Frozen. But we'll wait and see until next year, you guys. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm finally gonna see. 
see the Muppets for the first time in person. I always wanted to see those Muppets. I'm so excited for this one. This one's gonna be pretty awesome in my opinion. Because, you know, it's the Muppets, you guys. You know, Muppets. Muppets. I love Muppets. But Muppets are awesome. Mazzel's next book. I actually got reservations for that one. Oops, I spoiled for October, but since people know, yeah, Dina Menzel. Hey, no worries. Yeah, I'm gonna finally meet up with Dina Menzel there at a, at a book signing. Just express yourself. And if you feel happy, just do it. Sometimes we are just... All right, guys, to cap things off, I'm finally gonna see a sneak peek for Zootopia Plus on Disney Plus. So, yeah. I don't know what to expect other than references with animals, I guess. But overall, this is going to be my last thing for, for the Expo in general for this year. It's been great though. I can't wait to talk about uh, my experience in a bit. Alright guys, just setting it up. You know, here's the logo and everything. Alright, we're almost ready for Zootopia Plus. At least they're showing at least first two episodes or one. I'm not sure, but here we go. So the pan I went to Zootopia was awesome actually. They had the two directors of the short films they made for Zootopia Plus and it was amazing! I did a Q&A with them quickly 
I was the first person in line for that. It was pretty awesome. I wish they would have recorded it, but they wouldn't let me because security over there. But I can say is it was a lot of fun. Definitely a great way to send off for this vlog. All right, guys, I think that'll be it for now, actually. Okay, before I sign out for now, I just want to say a special thanks to Rachel from Rachel Reviews for um, joining me on this. It's been great. It's been awesome. And also a special thanks to Sky Roberts, aka Austrian Disney Girl. She's such a nice human being. I mean, wow. Sky, if you're watching this, I just want to say is thank you so much and for helping me and everything for this vlog. And I'm glad to be part of your vlog as well. So hopefully we do see each other again in the near future. All right, Sky, I'll see you around, okay? Take care. So what do I think about the 23 Expo 2022? Well, it's been mostly the best experience I ever had. Some issues I have are some of the staffing at the very beginning with Disney Legends. The, what, what just happened there that is that it started without us. We were like the last people in to, to Legends. It's unfortunate, like, I only missed like the first few minutes of, of that panel. All because of horrible staffing. Well, that's just a minor thing. Overall, the rest of the, of the event that I can attend to was just amazing. What I love about it are definitely the animation panels that I went to. The big one, the small ones. But, I mean, the announcements for all these upcoming features from Disney Animation and Pixar. Absolutely, I'm like looking forward to watch. Oh my god! I mean, it was amazing. It was like an, another amazing night. I think this is better than 2019, in my opinion. Then next day with the Marvel stuff. I mean, the Marvel stuff. I'm really surprised. There's not much news about it. Like, there's not nothing new outside of the Halloween special. All I can say is, well, I'm happy to to go to the panel with with my friend Sky. Oh my god, An Australian Disney girl, by the way. So, yeah, my favorite panel for the day was definitely Encantos. You know, when you saw what happened with, with, with Adisa, oh my god, I had to run to say hi to my Twitter friend because we've been friends online for almost a year and finally meeting her in person like this, oh my god, something like you see in Forrest Gump, you know, Jenny running to, to Forrest. That's pretty much how I feel in that moment. But yeah, uh, my favorite has to be this, the Encanto panel and the Zootopia Plus panel. How are you guys? This is such an amazing D23. For everyone at Disney Animation, please hire me, okay? Because I have a portfolio. <laughs> but seriously though, thank you guys for showing up. I mean, the big people as well. Oh my God. I'm gonna take a couple um, pictures of this. So overall, you guys, that's it for, for D23. Um, thank you guys for, for watching and everything and subscribing and commenting. Feel free if you want to. I have extra videos coming up, you know, as well. As of now, you guys, just thank you for watching. And I'll be done. Good night, I guess. I don't know. I ran out of ideas to say for, for, the, for tonight.